Hey, what's up? I'm Jason, and when I first started using Unity, the first thing I wanted to do was spawn some objects and make them go flying around. In fact, I think it was a cannon and a cannonball. I wanted to spawn some cannons and spawn some cannonballs and make those cannonballs fly out and go shooting across the world. And I did. It took me a couple hours to figure it out and get it kind of working, but it was a lot of fun. And I realized along the way that there were a lot of different ways to do this. There were quite a few different ways to create a cannonball. I think I started by creating a primitive and adding a rigid body and launch. I don't even remember. There were a lot of different options though, and it did take me a while to figure out how to do it right. So in this video, I want to show you a couple different ways that you can spawn a game object. Um, I want to talk briefly about some things that you should watch out for when spawning game objects, other stuff to look into. And then we'll also touch a little bit on the new addressable system, which is a cool new way to spawn assets that um, is useful for more advanced stuff. If you're into the beginner stuff, that's what we'll hit first. And then if you're into something more advanced, uh, just hang around and we'll get into addressables a little bit near the end. Now, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, make sure that you share this video. Don't like it or subscribe it or any of that stuff. Just, uh, just share it. No, I'm kidding. You like and subscribe if you want to, but sharing is the most important thing. Also, uh, special thanks to everybody on Patreon and um, everybody who emails me. You guys are all awesome. Let's get going. So what I've got set up here is a basic little scene with a cube for a floor and then three different rocket spawners. We had this one enabled at first. We're going to start with the simplest little rocket spawner here. This is a class or a, well, it's a game object with a single script that is a class that has a reference to a rocket prefab. So I want to look at the prefab and then look at the code and show you exactly how this works and how we do all this. So the first thing I'll do is just click over here on the rocket prefab and go take a peek at it. It's in my prefabs folder and it's just this little mini rocket object. It's got a rocket script on it. It has a box collider and a rigid body and a transform. And you can see a little preview of it. By the way, if you're not used to this UI, if it looks a little bit different, this is the beta version of Unity 2019.3. The UI has changed a little bit. It looks and feels a little different. It took me a while to get used to it, but I like it now. So let's take a look at this prefab in a little bit more detail, though. I'm just going to double click on it to go to prefab edit mode. And here you can see that we've got this Atom rocket that I actually grabbed from the asset store. Again, if you search in here, like for rocket, and then go to asset store, you can see a whole bunch of really cool free options. And I just did that, grabbed, uh, it was that one right there. Thanks, whoever made that. Awesome, all these free packages. So we've got an Atom rocket model on a rocket, and that's about it. Not much to it. Let's look at the code now and see how we actually do the spawning of this object. So normally, you know, if you've never spawned anything, the first thing you do is you drop it out into your scene, you go to your scene view and you know, hit F to go to it, and then you move it around, get it in place and all that. But we don't want to do that. We want to do the runtime spawning. So we're going to do that all with the code in our rocket spawner. To do that, I'm going to go to my rocket spawner, and I'm just going to double click on the script here. Well, single clicked it popped it up down there, but I'll double click it and open it up in my code editor. I'm also using a slightly non-standard code editor. I'm using Rider just because I like it a lot more than the alternatives. I switched about a year ago and I wouldn't go back. It's not free though, but if you're interested, go check out Rider. It's pretty cool. It has a free trial. So here's our code. We have a public class rocket spawner that's a mono behavior, so we can have it as a component on our game object. That's what makes it so that we can add it right there. And then we have two methods here. We have an update method, and then down here you'll see we have a spawn rocket at position method. So the spawn rocket at position is actually doing the work of spawning the object here. And here we're doing it in a very simple way. We're calling instantiate. This is the same as game object dot instantiate. We could do it either way, but since we're in a mono behavior, we don't necessarily need the game object part. That's the only reason it's different there. Then we give it this rocket prefab as the first parameter. So we're calling instantiate with this prefab. And then we're passing in a position, this vector3 spawn position, and then quaternion.identity, which is just a default rotation. So let's take a kind of pull back and look at this. Well, what's calling rocket spawn rocket at position and how is that working? 
and that's in our update. So in our update method, we're checking to see if the user has pushed the mouse button zero, which is just our left click. So if they have pressed left click, we get the position where the mouse is on the screen. So this input.mouse position is just a vector with the screen mouse position. We don't necessarily have to throw it into a vector three. I'm just doing that to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on. On line 11, we're taking that value and we're putting it into this screen point to ray method, which is just a method on cameras. And we're using the main camera. I put a note here for anybody who's curious. Yeah, you do want to cache your camera. You don't want to use camera.main. It's slow. It uses tags. It's There are a whole bunch of videos and reasons why you don't use camera.main. But in demos, it's totally fine because we're only going to have one camera. So we call screen point to ray. And this gives us a ray, which is just pointing into the world. It's just like an invisible line pointing into the world, telling us the first thing that it hits. And it tells us the first thing it hits when we call physics.raycast. So really the ray is kind of this point in a direction. So we have the origin and the direction. And then the raycast does the thing, hey, does this ray go through anything? And if it does, put some info about that thing into this raycast hit, hit info object. And one of the important things to put there is the point where that line intersected. So when I'm clicking on that cube on the ground, we're getting the point where that line intersects through the cube, like right here. And then we're passing that point into instantiate, spawning our rocket at that position with that default rotation. And that's all we need to spawn this object. Well, almost all we need, because I kind of glossed over this whole rocket prefab thing. So on line five, we have a private game object field that has this serialized field attribute in front of it. Serialized field attribute, by the way, makes it so that private fields can show up in the inspector and they can be edited in the inspector. The alternative is to make this a public field. So you just replace the word private with public, get rid of the serialized field, and it will show up there. But it does break a little bit of encapsulation and it can cause problems long-term in bigger projects where you accidentally misuse things. So to keep things a little safer, I always go with the private serialized field unless I need to access this prefab from outside the class. Here we don't. So big rant about that, but the main thing is that this is a reference to the prefab that we want to spawn. And if we go back into Unity, take a look at our rocket spawner, we can see that we have that reference right there. And let me click on it one more time. Well, I need to have my project view open click on it and you'll see that we go down and we get that selected. So that's the very basic rocket spawner. Let's play and just see what that looks like. I'm gonna hit play in here, go to the game view, should pop right up and I click and my rockets appear. So I click and some rockets spawn. Cool. Um, those rockets actually shouldn't be taking off. So I'm not sure why they are. The typed rocket spawner is supposed to make them take off and we're gonna actually just look at that and yeah, why edit? Let's just go through and take a look and look at the typed rocket spawner. I'll show you what the differences are and why the other one was not supposed to launch, but probably did. So here we go. We'll uncheck the rocket spawner and we're going to enable this typed rocket spawner. I'm going to save my scene, control S, and then I'm going to open up the typed rocket spawner script. And I want you to take a look at this. It's very, very similar. In fact, if I go back and forth between the two, other than my zooming difference, you see the only real difference is right here and right here. What we're doing is we're defining the type of component that's required for this game object reference. So now in our typed rocket spawner, we're actually requiring that our prefab be a rocket. If we look back at our other one, this rocket spawner, it just has to be a game object. We could technically throw anything in there. Um, I don't want to grab those, but like I could throw this random directional light in there and now we'd be spawning copies of this random directional light. In fact, let's do it. Watch. Let's uncheck typed rocket spawner. Check type or rocket spawner, which is really a bad name for it because it's not really what it's doing. But in this example, it's what it was intended to do. And then I click and, yep, just spawning some lights. If I uncheck maximize on play and pause, um, you can see that we actually have all of our lights showing. Oh, well, and I can hit pause again and you can see the lights just appearing. So, the difference there with that typed one is that we can't do that. We can't give it this bad data. So let's uncheck that one. We'll re-enable the typed one. And if we try to drag in a directional one, we see that that's not an option. And if I set this to none, see that it actually says it needs to be a rocket. And there's none in my scene, so I gotta go back to my project view, go to my prefabs, and drop that thing back in. 
So this works the same, except that when we do the instantiate, we're getting back that rocket object instead of the game object. Now we could, with the other one, do a get component call on it and get the rocket component and do something with it. But generally, if we know the type of the thing, we want to enforce that so that the wrong thing isn't put in there and that we don't have to make these extra get component calls. So that is generally, I'd say, how you want to spawn an object at runtime. Now, there are a couple caveats, a couple very important things to mention, and then I want to dive into addressables really briefly. Um, the most important one is that if you're spawning objects, it can be a somewhat heavy process. So depending on the platform and the scenario, you may want to pre-spawn all of these objects, disable them, and then allow them to be enabled. And we usually do that with a pooling system. I won't dive into pooling here. I have a couple videos about pooling and there are a ton of other resources out there about pooling. But if you figure out how to use a pooling system, it's relatively simple you'll do the same kind of thing except you'd call like pool dot get rocket or rocket pool dot get or something and you get a rocket back out and it would handle all of that stuff and don't worry pooling may sound complicated it's not it's very simple and uh, once you do it a couple times it becomes very easy to get easy pattern to kind of throw in a lot of places and get a big performance increase um the other thing is destroying game objects is also pretty hefty, so throwing them into a pool helps again. Now let's just dive into addressables because I know some of you are out there thinking like, hey, all of this is very basic. I just want to get to the addressable stuff. How do we spawn with addressables? And when I first started looking at addressables, I was thinking, okay, they're going to be kind of like asset bundles, kind of a pain. Um, a lot of work that you have to do to get everything set up and working. So. So we'll figure it out and then we'll do it. But I dove in and I was actually really pleasantly surprised. They're amazingly simple to use. So I'm gonna stop playing and hit the first important part and that's that you need to go to the package manager and you need to import addressables. So if you go in here and go for address, you'll see the addressables package. Now this eventually will probably just become part of the editor, I don't know, or maybe, maybe it won't and it'll always be a package. But for now, you definitely need to go grab the addressables package, import that, and then open up window, and then asset management and addressables. And it'll pop up asking you to create an initial configuration. Just hit that button, and then your thing should look kind of like this. Your addressable window should look like this. Once you have that, you go over to the mini rocket, and I've checked the addressable box. This box appears once I've set this this up and now I have this reference or this string path to where this addressable would be so if I want to reference this addressable by the actual address this is it it's assets prefab is mini rocket dot prefab and I can change this but I left it alone we can also do some tags and there's quite a few lab there's labels and all kinds of stuff or not tags I meant labels there's labels and other stuff that we can do I'm not going to dive into those I'm just going to go into the very basics of how to spawn these things so with this address so you might think like, hey, I'm going to need to go in there now and put in a string reference in the code and things are going to get messy. But you can see if I click on, well, let's turn off the typed rocket spawner. Let's click on the addressable one. If you look here, you'll see that the rocket prefab thing, it looks similar, but it's actually a little bit different. It's a drop down. And if you look here, you'll see that it's showing me my available addresses. So I've got this mini rocket. Okay, let's go in here and make a mini rocket too. So we'll make a mini rocket, give it a number two, and we'll give this a new address, and then we should see the new address show up in there as well. Here, let's see if, I can, if I can rename things properly. So we've got mini rocket two, we make that addressable, go into my addressable rocket spawner, and now you see that we have option two in there. So it's as simple as that for setting it up, but you might wonder, oh, what the hell is this? What's this rocket prefab? How did you do that? Well, let's open it up and take a look. It's this asset reference. So instead of putting the rocket or the prefab, I put the asset reference. And then I can select it from that list of addressables. And then these addressables um, can be loaded at runtime. They can be synced um, offline. So if we want to pull these things down, more like a resource bundle or asset bundle, um, we can do that. So if you're not sure what to use, not sure if you should use addressables or if you should just use instantiate, use instantiate. If you have an issue where you need to 
load things at runtime, you need to pull them down, you need to better manage what things are loaded, what things are unloaded as you go from level to level, um, or as things load in and out of your level, then asset bundles, or I guess addressables now, are definitely worth looking into. Uh, there's a whole lot of info about them, and I'll probably do a full video just diving deep into addressables and how to use them in a bigger project. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you just drop a comment below and let me know. If there's a lot of them, I'll do it sooner than later. Um, but again, if you're just doing more beginner spawning stuff, learn more about the pooling. Don't worry about addressables yet. It's much more of an advanced concept and more of a thing that you need in bigger projects. It, it's helpful, kind of neat, but you may notice here that we're doing this instantiate async. We don't actually have a reference back to the rocket. We don't even have a reference back to the game object. We need to register for an event. We'll get that event callback when the game object is created. And then we have to do the get component on it. So there's still a good amount of work and it's not worth switching to addressables if you're not doing it to solve a problem. If you're doing it to solve a problem, great. It seems like it's gonna be amazing for solving a lot of problems. But if you don't have one of those problems, then you're just overcomplicating things yourself. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in this stuff again, don't forget to share it. Don't like, don't subscribe it. Just share it. Go put it up on Facebook or MySpace or Instagram or whatever other thing you can think of. And anyway, thanks for watching. Also, special thanks to everybody on Patreon. You guys are awesome. Um, we're doing lots of meetups and stuff. So if you're interested in that stuff, go check it out. And uh, 